Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing YouTubers specifically in the context of recent announcements regarding Thai tax policy. Now, to be clear, uh, perhaps I'm leaning into my accusations of being clickbaity or whatever. I'm not actually talking about YouTubers specifically, or I should say exclusively. I'm talking about really more than anything, digital nomads, so-called content creators, even expat standard, you know, expat business people who may operate in Thailand or use Thailand as a hub. Any and all of those folks, I think, are probably, if not targeted by the recent announcement regarding policy changes on deferment of monies coming into Thailand from the time they were accrued. And I've discussed this in other videos. Up until January 1 of 2024, it has been possible to basically defer bringing in money that's accrued offshore, either earned, unearned, what's called accessible income or accessible funds here in Thailand. So basically money offshore, and it comes into Thailand up until January 1 of 2024, there's been this, what some are calling a loophole. I don't think that's a correct assessment. There's just been a state of affairs that's allowed a deferment to the following calendar year or later, and then being able to pull that money into Thailand without any sort of tax oversight, tax liability. That is going away. That's going away January 1, 2024, as we've discussed at length in other videos. What's the purpose of talking about this with regard to this video? Well, there's a lot of misconceptions going around about this. Some seem to think it's targeting retirees. That was never who I thought it was really set to target. And as I've thought about it, and again, we have not seen a more fleshed out set of regulations promulgated yet and published in the Royal Thai Gazette. So when that happens, presumably, presumably when that happens, we will go ahead and follow up with with respect to the details as much as we can for now it's just sort of a it's just sort of a blanket announcement that this protocol that's been allowed in the past is not going to be allowed in the future why though am i saying that it's sort of targeting content creators digital nomads youtubers etc well because i think it might be and and the reason i think it might be is i've been thinking about this a lot for example retirees and I've seen a lot of comments on this, and you can't just dismiss this whole thing by saying, well, we've got a double tax treaty. Well, okay, your situation may or may not warrant usage of the double tax treaty. And even in the event that it's applied, your situation may or may not warrant exemption or a foreign tax credit of some kind stemming from that double tax treaty. So again, depending on your situation, you may or may not be subject to tax liability based on the provisions of the tax treaty per your nationality. As we discussed in another video, look, there's, there's interpretation that goes on with respect to these things, and there's two sovereigns involved. There are the, essentially the treaty parties, and their courts, respectively, get to interpret the terms of those treaties. So just simply saying, oh, we got a double tax treaty, no problem, that may not be the end of the analysis, but leave that aside. For YouTubers specifically, you may have a different situation going on here. Specifically, I, I started thinking of YouTubers. I think this same analysis could be applied to general content creators, so-called digital nomads, again, depending on the circumstances. But with YouTubers, to my mind, it's kind of cut and dried. And, and in fact, as I've been sort of parsing out my own thinking on this, I've come to some hypotheticals and always beware with hypotheticals. Again, in law school, we joked about hypotheticals. You can make hypotheticals about anything, but sometimes you need to do it in order to kind of run through what could happen moving forward. So, okay, we've got this, we've got this new announcement. There's no ability to essentially mitigate tax liability by deferring the bringing in of funds or the patriation into Thailand, if you will, Repatriation may not be the right word, but the movement of funds into Thailand, the remittance of funds into Thailand until the forthcoming, until the next calendar year. So you wait a year, bring it in, or you may not even have to wait a year. You wait till the next calendar year, 
and bring it in, and okay, you don't have to deal with accrued tax liability. Okay, that's ending Jan 1. So now timing of how you bring in your money from abroad no longer matters. More to the point, and I, I told folks in another video to be, I, I made a video about a raid that happened down in Phuket and, uh, regarding nominee corporations, and I said, Loot YouTubers, be on guard, because I think that there's something, there's insight in this for YouTubers, because you can become complacent over time and start doing things just thinking you're, it's going to keep working that way ad infinitum. What I think is going to happen here is quite the opposite of that, in fact. I think, moving forward, we could see a situation wherein YouTubers are come to, who come to Thailand, I'm not talking about a travel YouTubers here for two weeks, they do some videos and they leave. That's highly unlikely. But YouTubers who live in Thailand and ostensibly are not making any money in Thailand from YouTube, under this new announcement, I think that a lane, if you will, is being set up to create a, a funnel, if you will, to go ahead and impose tax liability on folks who essentially make their living online but primarily live in Thailand. What kind of setup would we be talking about here? Well, if you're somebody who's a content creator, digital nomad, whatever, and you're sort of globe trotting, but you've decided to make your base in Thailand, for example, and you've said, okay, I'm gonna start doing YouTubes and things here, but I get paid offshore. The YouTube sends the money to my bank account in the United States, maybe personally. Maybe you have a corporate account, a limited liability company, something of this nature, and that money goes to that limited liability company, whatever, if you're the beneficial owner, there are mechanisms in place already, and we've talked about this many years ago, talking about the agreements between the Ministry of Finance as well as the Treasury Department in the United States to share financial and banking information on the nationals of both of those countries. I'll use America just as a for example because I'm most familiar with it. But in under those circumstances, you know, I can see a situation where, for example, a YouTuber who, by the way, is making content which is time stamped and clearly evident of what they've done in Thailand because they've recorded themselves doing it here. And then if they accrued money from that, under those agreements between the Treasury Department in the United States and the Ministry of Finance here and all the banking that goes into that, for example, FATCA, the Foreign Account Transparency Compliance Act back in the United States, there were a lot of implications to that that resulted in a lot of bilateral cooperation between tax authorities, not to mention the fact that the double tax treaty exists. And I'll get into, I, I'm going to make another video getting into the analysis of kind of how the double tax treaty is a little bit disingenuous in, well, disingenuous may not be the right word, but people take it the wrong way. They think it's one thing, and it's, it's really, in many ways, quite the opposite of what people think it is. Leaving that aside, though, I can see a scenario now moving forward past 2024 where, for example, YouTubers, again, content creators, especially folks who are spending more than 180 days physically present in Thailand, who say, well, you know, I do stuff online and that may make money, but it doesn't actually come here to Thailand, so, you know, I don't need to worry about that. Or, you know, I have it go offshore and then I bring it into Thailand. I think a lot of these provisions are being set in place to start dealing with that from a tax standpoint, from a tax collection standpoint. And let's view it also from the standpoint that, look, if governments can raise tax revenue from folks who aren't their actual voting constituents, that's always going to be a win with politicians. So you, you know that's, that's pretty much a fact. So again, there's something to be said for that just from a political angle, but also when you look at what they're putting into place here, yes, I think it is very safe to say that we could see a situation down the road, and even I can see a scenario arising where folks, and I'm not happy about this, I, I, I kind of grin because I sort of know the, I, I know the way that these folks think at the end of the day. It's revenue generation. Already created content that was clearly created in Thailand, you know, may become the target if it's bringing in enough money. And if that money is ultimately coming into Thailand and to this point has not been taxed, I could see a scenario where, yeah, that's something that you have to deal with. Now, are there solutions to this? Yes, absolutely. 
We've set up many people over here for YouTube operations, for content creation operations, for you know, sort of digital nomad type businesses, you know, online type businesses. Yeah, there are ways that you can absolutely mitigate against those kind of problems. But as I discussed before, regarding work permits involving content creators, YouTubers, etc., people have gotten kind of complacent and said, oh, I don't need to really worry about that. Okay, fine, whatever, worry about what you want to worry about. I've spent a lot of time watching people be complacent about such things, and then ultimately we see enforcement. But I started thinking about it when I've, as I've been diving into this whole tax policy issue, and I'm starting to really think that there's, that a lot of this tax policy change may be due to the fact that we, we have seen a change in the nature of doing business online. A perfect example of this is, and we've done videos on this as well, and I've had to deal with this myself, having used PayPal here for years, there were major changes in the past roughly 18 months regarding PayPal, how PayPal is used in Thailand, and tax assessment associated with PayPal. I think that this recent policy change may be in line paradigmatically with that change regarding PayPal and how people are paid here in Thailand, most importantly, how they're taxed. I think we could see similar developments along those lines. And so for this reason, I think especially YouTubers need to be starting to think about making arrangements if you wish to live in Thailand long term. I don't think it's overly prudent to presume you're going to be able to sort of offshore income that's accrued from sort of these type of businesses that may be occurring in Thailand or this type of content creation occurring in Thailand. I don't think it's prudent to presume the taxes can be avoided on an ongoing basis into the foreseeable future.